Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Hi everyone, it's JJ. Welcome to today's video. Now we're going to be visiting the planet Mars. Now, if you haven't checked out our channel before or this is your first time here, do check out our other videos. We've done Mercury, Venus and Earth so far and we're working our way out of the solar system. Now this is the last rocky planet of the eight main planets in our solar system. So it's a really good chance to delve in and take a detailed look at this wonderful planet. Now with a diameter of around 4,200 miles, it's certainly not a small planet, but large compared to the rest of the planets in the solar system, it is not. It is also much smaller than our own planet Earth. But if you think that just because it's small, it's light, certainly isn't, it comes in at a staggering 642 sextillion kilograms. Now, I don't know about you, but that number is so huge, I can't even put that into perspective and think about how much that would be to try and carry around. It's very, very heavy indeed. That's because it is made up vastly of rock. And another name for a planet made up mostly of rock is known as a terrestrial planet. It sits around 142 million miles away from our sun. Now we, here on planet Earth, we sit around 93 million miles away. So it's around 50 million miles or so, on average, further away from the sun than we are. That is quite a distance. And because of that, the temperatures on Mars are far lower because it doesn't get as much sunlight as we do. The average temperature varies between minus five and around minus 80 degrees Celsius that is super cold, colder than the coldest places on Earth. It does spin around the same rate as planet Earth, therefore a day is just over 24 hours on Mars, whereas ours is of course 24 hours exactly. However, it takes far longer to go around the sun. In fact, almost twice as long, meaning you would have to wait two years to have one birthday on planet Mars. Doesn't sound so great, does it? Let's take a look and see Earth and Mars side by side, and let's look at some of the key differences between these two fascinating planets. So, first off, looking at these two planets, Mars is only around 70% as dense as planet Earth. What that essentially means is, for every square of Mars, and every square of Earth, Earth is denser, which means it has more crammed in to a smaller space than Mars does. So although it's not far behind planet Earth, it is less dense and only about 70% as dense as planet Earth. So although Mars has the same rough land coverage as planet Earth, it's actually far smaller in terms of its overall volume. Now what that means is you could essentially fit six Mars's worth of volume inside the total volume of planet Earth. If you imagine planet Earth like a giant sphere filled with water, it would take six small spheres of Mars crammed inside the jar of planet Earth. The reason why they have similar land coverage, despite Mars being quite a bit smaller, is because Mars doesn't have any surface oceans. It has ice caps at the North and South Poles, but we don't count those as they are still technically solid land. So Mars has land all over its surface, whereas planet Earth, of course, 70% is covered in ocean. So the land that is there, if we took it all and added it all up, it would be around about the same as the total surface land of Mars. As we know, planet Earth has thousands and thousands of life forms from plants to animals to people. Its atmosphere, its environments can support a vast amount of different forms of life. Mars, on the other hand, doesn't have liquid water as we know it. It does have frozen ice caps, like I said earlier, at the North and the South Poles, much the same as we do. 
What we do know about Mars, however, from sending rovers, satellites, taking pictures of the surface and studying its makeup, we found that we do believe Mars had water on it at some point in its long distant history. This is because we have found evidence of ancient riverbeds, deltas, perhaps even vast oceans that were perhaps once present on the surface. When? We don't know. That's what scientists are still trying to find out to this day. So now, let's take a look at this unique planet in a little more detail, and let's explore some of the unique features that make this planet so very special. So, as I mentioned, Mars has polar ice caps at the North and the South Poles. Now this is made up mostly of water and carbon dioxide. It's known as dry ice, and much like Earth's ice caps, it changes size with the seasons. Now, if you thought Mount Everest was big on planet Earth, you haven't seen anything yet. No, Olympus Mons on Mars is the largest volcano on Mars. Now, it reaches a staggering 13.6 miles in height. That is over three times the height of Mount Everest. Now, considering the size of Mars, that is absolutely enormous. And it's so large, in fact, that it can be seen from space. Now, another crazy feature on Mars's surface is Valles Marineris, quite literally translate to Marina Valley. Now, this is the largest canyon on Mars. It's 2,500 miles long. That's over 10 times longer than the Grand Canyon here on planet Earth. How big do things on Mars get? Not just comparing it to planet Earth, this canyon is huge with respect to the entire solar system, at around seven miles deep in places and several miles wide, it is in fact one of the largest known canyons in the entire solar system. What an impressive feat for a relatively small planet in the grand scheme of things. Now, another similarity between Earth and Mars is that both planets technically have weather. Mars, however, is slightly different when we compare it to the weather on planet Earth. Planet Earth can have dust storms. In particularly dry areas of the world, they're quite a common occurrence, but nothing like the scale that we see on Mars. These dust storms on Mars can encircle the entire planet and can last for weeks or even months. How crazy is that? These storms are caused by Mars's very thin atmosphere, and that can have quite an impact on the overall climate of the planet. Next is the exciting part, and my personal favourite part. We're going to jump into the section where we look at some of the exciting ways that we have explored planet Mars so far. And let's also take a look at the things we might be doing in the future. Now, in recent years, we have sent satellites, probes, rovers, different robots. We've even sent a helicopter to Mars to explore and discover its secrets. Now, what these rovers, and in particular, the land-based rovers like Perseverance, Curiosity, they have been digging and taking samples from the planet's surface to try and determine if Mars had previous life. They're looking at riverbeds, they're looking at the mountains, the canyons, and everywhere in between to try and understand how this planet is the way it is today. Now, I'm going to stop talking for this next bit, but because what you are about to hear was recorded by the Perseverance Mars rover in February 2021, shortly after it landed on the surface of Mars. And this is the first official time that we have heard what Mars sounds like. Do pay attention. I'm going to stop talking now. Here is the clip. How incredible with the technology that we have today that we can hear sounds on the other side of the solar system on different planets. I don't know about you, but I find that 
absolutely amazing. Now, landing people on Mars is no easy thing to do. Mars is so far away, any spaceship we have today would take months upon months to get there. Then, of course, we can't just step off the spaceship and breathe the air on Mars. No, because it's not suitable for us. We would have to build special habitats if we wanted to explore Mars. Now that takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of money, and it takes years and years of scientific research in order to make it possible. But what an exciting opportunity in the decades and the years to come that we may be able to see people take their first steps on Mars for the very first time. What a great time to be alive. Thank you for joining me on today's adventure to look at the planet Mars. Now, if you haven't already, do check out our other videos on the inner planets, Mercury, Venus, and our own planet, of course, planet Earth. Now, moving forward, we're going to be doing the gas giants next, and we'll eventually cover the entire solar system. I'm also going to be doing a very special video on our ninth planet, which is, of course, the planet Pluto. So, do join us again very, very soon. Check out our other videos if you haven't. Do like our video if you enjoyed it today, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Take care, everyone, and stay curious. I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.